Well, if you know my friends, super happy to have you today. I'm here with none other than Carrie Lennon, who is back in the show because you guys have been asking for it. And today we're going to talk about the four pillars of building an artist brand. So don't go anywhere, it's going to be really good. My name is Sergio Gomez. I'm an artist, curator, gallery owner, author, and co founder of the Art Next Level program. And my goal with this channel is to make marketing and art business easy so that you can grow your art career, find new opportunities, sell more art, and spend more time creating in the studio. So if you like that, make sure you click on the subscribe button and click on the little bell so that you receive notifications of our future videos. Gary, super happy to have me once again. I'm excited to be here. Oh my goodness, this is like... Up with all your work, it's wonderful. <laughs> I know, and, uh, you know, we go back pre-pandemic when we did that one episode of Refer with Sergio about the artist brand. It was so good. The, the breakfast was amazing too. And it's one of the most uh, watched uh, episodes so, you know, that people remember, you know, when we talk about branding. So since the pandemic, we're like, oh, we got to do a second, a sequel. And am I getting breakfast, by the way? Uh, 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 uh. Very happy because today we can talk about these four pillars of building a brand. Uh, particularly for you as an artist, as a creative, and also thinking about how the world has changed and evolved after the pandemic, continues to evolve. And uh, I think a brand is one of those things that you, you don't just do once and you leave it alone, right? Like a painting, it's done and it's done, I want to touch it. Yes. But a brand is always in flux, right? You always yes. have to think about it. And... I use the word dynamic. I always say a brand is dynamic. It's like a living organism and it's shaping itself and changing it should be evolving because the times evolve as well and yeah they're really true and now carrie there's a lot of our friends who probably have no idea who you are so we're going to give him also a chance to, to let it to know you a little bit so carrie is a branding expert just give us a you know a couple of words uh but a few sentences i just say oh. you know kind of what you what we do where how i learned about brands um Brandy's been the most important part of my career success, absolutely. So I had an agency uh, in Chicago, and we worked with luxury brands. So that included Louis Vuitton, Prada, Tiffany, Ferragamo, Mercedes-Benz, you name it. And uh, I always tell people those brands didn't hire us to invent their brands. They're pretty good at that. <laughs> um, but what they hired us to do was align with their brands, that they felt we knew how to tell their story. And then the other bigger position I had was the um, director of public relations for a company called Alta Beauty. And they're a huge retailer. Um, at the time, we had about 700 stores and carried many brands. So again, I got to work with Lancome, wow. uh, Clinique, Urban Decay, Benefit. And I, it was about aligning with their brand. So I learned from some of the best brands in the world and now I share my knowledge in presentations, but I also work with entrepreneurs. Uh, let's talk about, you know, these four pillars, right? When I think of a pillar, it's something that's a structure that's well-built that is going to carry me or carry this structure for a long time, right? Think of the Roman times, like yeah. those pillars, beautiful walking through that. So let's, let's uh, walk through that, you know. Can you walk through the first one? Absolutely. So there's four and they're really, sequential okay so you start with one go through the four and uh so i'll just start with the first one yes. which is define and discover your brand i really like the word discover because my clients all have their brand and i always i equate it to a treasure chest okay. there's a treasure chest with all these skills and talents that you have especially as an artist or a gallery or whoever and what branding does is go in and decide which of those you want to bring to the forefront. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's no, there's nothing inauthentic or fake. It's not like, well, we're going to figure out how to make you look like this. We're, in fact, we're going to figure out what's the most important for your audience that you already have and bring that to the forefront. We think of the big brands where they have like these branding themes and hundreds of people kind of working behind. Yeah. But for the artists, like. We had ourselves in our studios, right? We had the, the cleaning person, the marketing person, and the quango making yeah, all trade. transportation, exactly. So uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to, to find or... Yes. I think I can tell you how to start. A yeah, good place it was to a start, start is, uh, and what I do with my clients, large and small, 
is I give them this list with about 60 words on it. And if you go on Google and Google brand attributes, you will find lists like this. And what you do is you look at that list, and I have my clients pick out eight to 10 words okay. that they feel will represent their brand, that they want to represent their brand. And then once they're feeling comfortable with that, I surprise them and say, oh, but now you have to get down to four to six. So good. Because um, starting with four to six is hard, but you can be more expansive. And then you find sometimes some words are similar and you pick the better of the two, but that's a great place to start to really be introspective with yourself. What do I want my brand to represent? I know that. So that's a really uh, practical tool mm -hmm. that we can use for step one. So another hint is when you come up with those words, run it by some clients or people that know you, um, not necessarily friends because they know you as a friend, but yeah. more business people and ask them if these words feel accurate to them. I love that. Super good. All right, let's go to the second bit. The second is now that you know your brand attributes and you're thinking about what your brand statement's going to be, you go into the create mode. And create is, think of that like assets. Okay. So what does your uh, logo look like? What does your, what kind of tone of voice do you want to talk in? Do you want to be quirky and irreverent? Do you want to be more conservative and elegant? So that tone of voice, the visual identity, and then think about how, if, I don't know, if you have a team member or team members, think about what's the human piece of that creation, yeah. right? So how are you or your team going to communicate in your brand voice to people? Because that is the piece most people forget is you've got your visual identity, You've got your communication tone of voice. They forget the human element of being your own best brand ambassador right. and letting your team members know that they can be brand ambassadors too. I love that. I think that's great. And I, something I like to talk a lot to the artists is that you have to be more of who you are. You don't need to try to become somebody else. Which happens so often you know, in social media, oh, I would love to be my brand more like that person. So I try to become an entity or an idea that I'm not really who I am. So to your point, uh, I never start with a client talking about the competition. And some brandy people will do that. Let's look at the competition in your space. And what I feel that does is it skews my client's mind where they start competing with the competition. Right. Rather than going inside and thinking, what do I want to stand for? We do look at the competition, but it's further in the process. Yes. We're doing really good. Let's Two. first do it. Okay, Why three. number three? The next is activate. Okay. You have all these assets you've created. Now, how do you get that out into the world? I call that public facing. How are you doing that? So that means social media, website. Are you doing presentations? Are you participating in shows or at galleries? How are you activating, energizing your brand so that people can see it and be exposed to it? I love that. And that I think that's where the social media aspects will come in, right? Here's the most important question I ask a client when they're thinking about social media. There's two. Number one is why would someone follow you? Yeah. Because I find clients get so excited about their work yeah. and that's nice, but why would someone follow you? I um, have an Instagram, not about my branding work, but I post about art around the country. Right. Everyone who follows me loves art. So they know exactly why they're coming to my Instagram. So think about why would people come to your Instagram? So why? Second is make sure you have the time to engage in the social media that you are interested in. Yeah. You know, there's best practices like how often you should be on Instagram, how often you should be on Facebook. And as you know better than anyone, it's work. Yeah. It's work to get the images, the writing. So if, if I'm working with 
an artist, say, who's a solopreneur or a small gallery, I just ask them, do you have the bandwidth to do this right? If you don't, don't do it. I'd rather see someone not do it than do it halfway. Yeah, well, yeah. Same thing with blogging. It takes a lot of time. Yeah, well, all those things are things that uh, one has to invest time on. And I, I know what you said about this one because I always talk also uh, to the idea that your art is not for every. Yes, you know, right. Sometimes we think that, or we wish that I make something and everybody must like it. This is awesome, but in, not the case, you know. Uh, there are people for different genres of art, for different works. Even within the same artist, there may be a, a collective who may like that piece, but will not like his other five, right? Yes. So understanding that kind of helps us and has helped me as an artist to, to kind of uh, not fall in the trap. Like if I post a picture of my art, everybody must like it or everybody who follows me must click a like. And I wanted to add that an important word I mentioned earlier was prioritizing yes right so when you have that treasure chest of all those brand attributes and skills that you have what's the priority and i'd say the same thing about activating and marketing look at how much time you have or budget you have to hire other people and prioritize so what you do you do fantastic i love that and <laughs> i love that yes exactly Love it. And that brings us to the last pillar Four. of the building. <laughs> okay. So tell us about that one. So the fourth is reinforce. Okay. Reinforce is really doing what you've been doing, but it's circular, really. It's aligning. It's activating. It's, it's like a boo. Okay. And, and you do this very well, Sergio. You just keep moving forward, staying on brand. And it's really tempting i've seen this happen with clients where they see the next bright shiny thing and they're like oh i want to do that i want to be that or i'm going to start telling that story and i say oh just like just let's hold on yeah and see can we somehow envelop that in your brand and do you find that this one that's also what keeps your customer or your audience top of mind because you continue to yes you know to kind of create this circle? Yes. For branding is, it, it, it almost becomes part of who you are, right? Yeah. Especially if it's authentic. You start to think um, think about it all the time. Like it could be you're at an event and you think, oh, this would be a great picture for my Instagram. Yeah. I know you think like that, that every time I walk into an art gallery, an artist or museum, I think, oh, this would be great. Yeah. Or this would be a good blog or... So it starts to become part of who you are, and, and it's really fun. I hope none of this sounds tedious, <laughs> because it's, it's so exciting to be authentic and have people respond to that. Right. And if they don't, you're still fine, because you know you're being yourself. Yeah. Well, uh, Gary, that's been super awesome conversation. The really great uh, chat for our friends who never watched that first episode. I'm going to put it also here at the very end of the video, so check it out, too. It's a great chat for us. So and uh, now in this one, I think we went deeper, mm -hmm. you know, into these ideas. And I think because we didn't have breakfast to be distracted, right? There was no but, but that's right. But I know lunch is on. <laughs> so uh, that was really fun. And for our friends who may want to also follow you and find out more about you. So uh, if you could share your website and your Instagram. Sure. Um, my company is Lannon Consulting, L-A-N-N-O-N, Lannon Consulting. That's the name of my website. And my Instagram is at Carrie Lannon, C-A-R-R-I-E, Lannon. And you can find me there. And you can reach me through my website or DM me through Instagram. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you to our friends for watching this show. And make sure you watch the first video as well. And we'll see you in the next one. But well, wait, before you leave this video, if you are an artist who wants to grow your art career and wants to achieve greater success, make sure you check out the Art Next Level program. You will find a link under this video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the next video that we have recommended just for you.